Hey, what's up? So I've been checking out this stuff from T-Bone Walker lately, and he has got these really, really cool chords that I wanted to share with you guys. In this guitar lesson, I'm gonna show you how T-Bone Walker uses these jazzy chords in the context of a 12-bar blues. First, we're gonna go over each of the chord grips and how you're supposed to hold them with your left hand, and then we'll go over how to use them in context. He does these super jazzy uh, ninth chords, and then also sometimes 13th chords. Okay. In this case, we're going to do it in the key of A. So instead of playing like an A7 like this, he would play what's called an A9 like this. Okay. It's a really cool, interesting voicing. It goes 4, 5, 4, 5, starting on the A string, gripped like this. So look at the diagram there. Okay, so this is like your substitute, a ninth chord substitute for this chord. Okay. Often how he uses that, just a little preview. He likes to slide it around like that, kind of get some tension, but it always kind of lands back on the original spot, okay? The other three chords that he's using is he'll use this uh, ninth chord with the A string root. So this is a substitute for like a D7. So D7 normally would look like this, your regular bar chord grip, or maybe you're just playing regular power chord grip like that. Instead, grip it like this. Okay, so we're going uh, fifth fret here with the middle finger, fourth fret with the first finger, and then we're laying the third finger down to bar the top three strings, okay? That's just a standard D9 chord, okay? Now sometimes what he also does is he'll actually play it, again, kind of rootless. So he'll move this second finger over and play the A on the fifth fret of the low E string. And just sounds uh, a little bit jazzier that way. And plus, a lot of times he's playing with a band, so the bass player is already playing that root note D. So this is a little bit of a harder grip, so you can choose either one to play. I think they're both fun to play. The other thing that he does often with these little ninth chords is he'll do something that we call flat five substitution. And that just means where instead of when we're going to land on this spot here in the fifth position, right before that you might do something like this. Okay. And I'm not going to get into all the music theory behind flat five substitution right now, but because all you really need to know is that if we're coming from an A chord right here, fifth position, and we're going to this D chord here, also in the fifth position, you can right before it play a little tension by doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, flat five sub, okay? So see, all, all I'm doing there is kind of sliding it down. Okay. One other variation he does on this often is makes this into a 13th chord, which is where you're stretching the pinky out. Okay. Sometimes people call that the James Brown chord because it, it's like... Uh... It's kind of like that funk chord, you know? So he'll use these little ninths and thirteenths like this. Okay. Descending usually kind of as like an intro. And then right before he starts, he'll play this augmented chord. This is a really cool chord too. Okay, really high tension, and it's really it's just formed like this. Okay, it's often played as an arpeggio like that as well. Okay, and then that's where he's going to kick off the blues in A. Okay, but remember he's going to play these ninth chords. So let me play the uh, blues with the tabs on the screen here. So the standard 12-8 uh, slow blues in the key of A. Uh, so you're going to count. Two twelves, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Or you can count like this: one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. And that's where you would start it over again. So have fun with this one, guys. These chords are really fun to play. Just 
play it to jazz up your normal blues progressions. If you guys want some more cool classic blues stuff, uh, check out this video over here and I'll see you guys over there. Oh yeah, and if you guys are wondering why my studio looks so bare and sounds so echoey right now, it's because I'm moving. So I'm gonna try to get a video to you guys like kind of showing you a little bit about what I'm, <laughs> the process of moving. Um, just a short one, just to let you guys know. Um, but I'm moving into a smaller space, but hopefully the idea is that it's, you know, it's closer to my home, so that way I can get more time to spend on Feedback Guitar Academy. And uh, you know, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and supporting me in all these different ways. If you like my channel, it really helps support me if you join FGA members, so the link's in the description for that. And that's where you can get tabs to every single one of my YouTube uh, lessons. Um, but I also had some other paid content. Uh, I have a fingerstyle course, your fingerstyle guide, where you know I'm, I'm where I'm going to teach you how to play fingerstyle guitar from the very beginning. So. It's basically, it's a huge course. It's equivalent to about a year of private lessons. So um, the link for that is also in the description. So if you want to support the channel, please check out some of that stuff. Um, and for those of you that do, I really appreciate it. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys inside there.